Hello everyone. Someone asked me to share how I built the dual pellet extruder. This guy. Let me put it straight so you, maybe you can see. Okay. Motors. The where the pellet goes. Inside there is the shaft. Uh, coupler and the uh, drill bit. Uh, let me position the, the camera so you can see. Let me see if you can see everything. Yeah. Okay. So basically, from from the motor, there's up here. Let me move. From the motor, there's a coupler and there is a drill bit that goes inside here and goes in here. So this is the the heater block that has two heaters. One goes on top and the other one goes on the side. Both have a temperature sensor. I think I use only one uh, because otherwise you have to have uh, two different boards and it's pretty complicated. Anyway, uh, so this is a custom heater block and it's pretty, pretty much the same as a normal uh, heater block that you see in 3D printing. Um, so there is um, this aluminum, the, the tube where the drill bit goes in uh, is stainless steel and the nozzle is stainless steel. The reason is because I'm printing with the carbon fiber and so you need to have uh, strong material otherwise it will eat it up. So this is how it's made now and so it has a heater block with, with a resistor and a temperature sensor. So what I'm going to do is probably I need to test this to remove the heater block and have the nozzle connected directly to the to the um, stainless steel tube and I have an induction heating so there, is, there will be a coil uh, around the, the, um, the stainless steel uh, tube and this will have uh, a better heating uh, system. Why? Because with a heater block you heat the uh, the stainless steel tube and then you heat the the um, drill bit not because it's touching because this doesn't touch the the the, um, the stainless steel tube but by air so it heats up to a temperature that is most likely lower than the heater block and lower than uh, the um, stainless steel tube which means you don't have a uniform melting of the uh, pellet. Instead if you have induction, induction will heat anything that is uh, in between the coils. So imagine if, if I have a coil around the tube, the tube which is still steel and the uh, drill bit will heat up um, at the same temperature. Um, still and steel nozzle too, same thing. Okay, so this one will be removed. I need to figure out how to connect the nozzle to the tube, but it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, I'll try to do a custom work with some uh, company. Um, and then I would like to change this drill bit, which in, th in this case is just a, a wood wood one, uh, to a one of those drill bits that has a, a pressure um, that allows to increase the pressure while if the pellet is going down to the to the the dr drill bit to the tube. Uh, that is more difficult. I already contacted some companies that they, they said they cannot do it or they, want, they don't want to do it. Uh, so I have to figure out that. 
but for now I'll I'll do with this this tube coil and I have to figure out how to connect the nozzle to to the tube. Probably I'll I'll leave a piece of uh, um, aluminum. I don't know. We'll figure out. Uh, but that way we'll have more uniform melting of the pellet around the the drill bit inside the tube. So how it's connected right now is just a clamp and this goes inside here. You see? There are two screws that go on the side of the clamp and yes, like this. So it's screw on one of those uh, holder for the motors, you know, NEMA 17 hold, motor holder. So I have one for the motor and one for the tubing system and the heating block. And um, and then there is a, another clamp here. So I attach to the to the holder, and then I can tie it around the uh, the tube, the stainless steel tube. Um, it's pretty heavy, this guy, because it has, it's dual. Uh, so I will figure out how to reduce the the weight too. Most likely, if I do with uh, with the coil, uh, only one temperature sensor will remain, and no heating resistors. Um, and to 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 drive the coil is pretty easy. You see, you use one of those MOSFETs that uh, show in another video, uh, and they just turn on only when you are heating the 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 heater block, or in this case, the coil. Okay, and it turns off when temperature goes uh, too high. You know, let's say the limit is two hundred. Uh, if that hits uh, the 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 temperature sensor gives back to uh, say you know it's two o two whatever so the MOSFET is turned off and decrease the temperature and so on you know it's the normal feedback loop that you have in the heating system so it doesn't matter so the MOSFET fixed this uh, uh, this issue of having a coil around the tube so th there won't be any issues there to to maintain. Also, I will keep in the new 3D printer that I'm building. I will keep the this system pretty much the same with the same NEMA 17 5 to 1 gear ratio because they work. Uh, but the 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 new motor for the 3D printer, the axes are NEMA 23 with the feedback loop, closed loop. So those should be interesting. Why I'm changing everything and why the printer is disassembled? It got damaged by water. I'm in my garage and people upstairs had a leak and everything that got damaged. So I have to buy new stuff. Pretty much all the boards uh, and the backup boards got destroyed and a bunch of other tools. So I take this occasion for revamping how the 3D printer will work, the structure and the design, and to upgrade the 3D printer uh, extruder, the dual extruder. So I hope uh, everything was uh, clear. Mm. Here is the attachment to the x-axis. This will change a little bit. Uh, Hopefully it will make it lighter because this is pretty heavy. It's probably three kilos, maybe. So I wanted to make it lighter for sure. Uh, what else? Uh, nothing else. This is how it looks like. You know. And let me show. So. So the motor is and here where the pallet goes, the coupler goes inside here, there's a small hole inside here, you see, that's the drill bit. So when the, the pallet goes inside here, goes in here and goes down to the 
and steel pipe. And um, that's it. It goes inside the steel pipe and inside the steel pipe with a drill bit that pushes the pallet down and comes out from the nozzle. It works pretty good, at least when I tested and you know done a bunch of testing. Uh, improvement uh, as I told is the heating coil induction in the heating and the drill bit to change the drill bit. Uh, that's it. So hopefully I answer some of the questions that people had for this dual extruder. It's not for sale, at least I don't have intention right now, but maybe in the future, I don't know if if I have a good results for my project. As I'm 3D printing a bike frame. Uh, so um, maybe in the future and then uh, I will answer some other question because people are cons uh, ask uh, so how do you uh, 3d print an uh, entire frame uh, well the 3d printer is huge if you see this is the plate it's 120 120 centimeters so 1200 by 600 probably the new printer will be a little bit bigger and I have um, some solution for uh, delamination, so layers not attaching together. Uh, that's one of the problems of strength. Uh, and uh, I'm planning to use lasers, and that's for another video. Okay, thank you very much for watching the videos. Uh, if you have any question, please put in the comment section. I will put in the description a bunch of this stuff and uh, please um, subscribe to the channel, put a like and share this video with others. And if you have any comments, uh, suggestions or even if you know someone that can make a, a drill bit with pressure, you know, the kind of uh, solution, let me know in the, in the comments. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye.